Okay, so Renault Zoe non-charge. So this is an early Zoe, this is a 2013, and um, it has this metal box on the top, which means it's a 5AM motor type. The variant is a Q210 of this one, um, but the uh, motor type, the sort of powertrain variant, um, is 5AM. If you, under the bonnet of your Zoe, if you have a black round plastic fan housing, right in the middle there, that's a 5AQ. This is a 5AM. So this is the rapid AC charging one. These can do 43 kilowatt AC charging. So we're going to get into this repair. Firstly, just a massive shout out to my members who've joined the channel. Um, some really interesting discussions and they've got access to member videos and things like that. So that is cool. So what is this? So this is a high voltage junction box, but it also is involved with charging. So this car doesn't charge. It had a fault with the aircon compressor, which has been disconnected, but it still doesn't charge. And it's got a fault with the charging rectifier. So the charging rectifier is in here, in the middle, in the bottom. This box is known as the BCB. Um, it means something in French. Um, and it's effectively a high voltage junction box, charger. It's So this, um, this connector is the incoming AC. So you've got your type two charging socket here. And the power literally goes straight to there, it's AC. That's the charging filter, it's checking your voltages and um, earth resistance, stuff like that. Um, and then it goes into this box where it actually gets rectified. The Zoe is a bit weird in that it uses the motor windings kind of for boost conversion, kind of like an inductor. Um, but yeah, the, the bulk of the charging is done kind of within this box really. There's a couple of things in here, capacitors and things. So we need to get this box out. Um, I can tell that the rectifier in here is shorted out because there's a test you can do sort of through the box and it shows that it's connected where it shouldn't be effectively. So the rectifier is just a load of transistors that fire um, sort of as needed to turn the incoming AC into DC which goes off to the battery down the back via one of those connectors back there. So we need to get this off, have a look inside um, and really the question is going to be on this vehicle, is it just the rectifier? I think it is at this point but it's kind of hard to tell until you fix all the things you can see that are broken and then try and charge and see what happens. Sometimes it damages the filter when the rectifier blows. It's just, um, yeah, how unlucky you are, really. But we're going to get this off and then see what happens. All right, catch you in a bit. Okay, so we've got this BCB on the bench. I've undone this cover panel so we can have a little look inside and see what we've got. So it's kind of tricky to see, first of all, because we've got this cover plate in the way, but our rectifier is actually underneath here. So it involves quite a lot of strip down and obviously you've got to be quite careful that things go back in the right place because if we cross anything over it's going to go very badly obviously when we power it back up um but we've got our sort of high voltage connectors up here we've got some buzz bars going across there high voltage cables going to different places and we've got the high voltage components underneath and then we've got this plate on top of here so this plate is holding all these little connectors Okay, so what are these? So these are interlock connectors. Interlocks are like the telltale to the car to tell it whether everything's, or whether in terms of connectors being in, whether things are safe. So it's a big part of safety interlocks. So high voltage safety. So if we look at the back of this plug, so let's just have a look in. So in this plug, we've got two big pins. And then can you see these two little connectors in here? That one there and one there, okay. Now, when the high voltage plug connects, there's a little, just like jumper cable, just a bridge, it's a piece of metal effectively in the plug that goes on here, and it links the two little middle pins together. So you can see that white wire and the gray one underneath there. Effectively, what happens is when the plug goes in, it obviously connects the high voltage, but the car needs to know whether all the orange plugs are connected. So the plug bridges these two wires, and this is fed back into the, um, ECU effectively the top half of the rectifier which is like the ECU for this box and it tells it whether it's connected or not so all of these little two wire connectors are all a safety interlocks um, so you can see that there's one in oh sorry it's difficult to show with my light and getting everything so you can see there's a two wire connector there there's you can see the white one there. there's a gray one underneath and um, there's also one on the lid so this is also an interlock, but it's an interlock for the lid. And it just literally, so that when the lid's on, it bridges that connection, it pushes the switch down. So if, if someone was to, for whatever reason, take the lid off their car and not realise the high voltage system was on, because the Zoe actually starts the high voltage system and starts charging to our battery, 
as soon as you open the door and lock it and open the door. So you might not realise that this box is actually live. Go to take the lid off. And when you take the lid off, it opens that switch. And then the car knows, oh, hang on a minute, something's not connected that should be. And it will shut the high voltage system down. So that's what all these are. We need to strip this box down. There's various ways to do it. Um, and um, I, I sort of thought that I did it the normal way until I saw my boss do one. Um, and uh, he basically did it in a totally, a totally different way, um, which was kind of interesting. Um, but um, yeah, fun times. So I'm going to start stripping this down. So this plate needs to come out. Obviously, we've got lots of connectors here. These ones are a right pain in the backside to get off. We've got to get the pick right in there. Obviously, not damage them because we need to go, them to go back on securely. So when the vehicle's on the road and it's vibrating down a bumpy, bumpy road, um, obviously nothing's going to come off. So yeah, we've got to get this off. I may split the box in half. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. But yeah, basically, there's a rectifier in the bottom of there. I'll just go and grab a rectifier, actually, so you can see it. Um, and then we know what we're doing. Right, catch you in a moment. Okay, right. So um, I have loosened this um, connector block that holds all the connectors. Get that out of the way. So now I can see down, this is the rectifier. Well, it's kind of two things, really. It's actually like the kind of ECU for this charging box um, and the rectifier is the bottom part of that so i've got one here and this is from a slightly different generation of zoe hence this one's got the connectors on the top um, and this one's got the connectors basically three along there and one on the end there so um but we basically need the bottom half of this so you can see there that white part that's the actual charging rectifier um and yeah and this is the the sort of ecu that controls the box and communicates with the charging equipment that kind of stuff so we've got comms with this box it can communicate so this top half's working um, but that bottom half is shorted out and we can tell that because of the connection that's going through it which shouldn't be there it's basically just a load of transistors quite high power but fairly sensitive electronics um, and if there's an issue with in this case it was the air conditioning compressor and um, developing a short circuit which has damaged this um, it can potentially be caused by faulty or incorrectly configured charge points stuff like that but yeah, basically the um, summary is I need to get that out and swap this base part of that rectifier over with that one um, and then get it back on the cart and see what happens. So it is water cooled this box. So there's water in and out there. So there is thermal um, grease on the bottom of it um, and it needs to be a good thermal grease. So I'm going to get that out um, and swap that over and then uh, we need to get it back together. All right. Cheers. Okay, so I've taken the whole top part off, which looks like that, sort of flipped over. And now what we've got left with is an AC capacitor, an inductor, and the rectifier. So it's the base of this which has blown. So when you take this top off, basically what you're left with is this, which is the actual rectifier. So if you're familiar with rectifiers, they take AC and turn it into DC. And this is designed for three phase AC. So this is incoming AC. And this is outgoing DC on that side. So there's a control board there and you can kind of see it set up for three lots of control. There's kind of three of most things there. So that kind of makes sense. So what actually is under here and what happens? So if you take this circuit board off, there's in a plastic cover. And if you take that plastic cover off, usually what happens is they look like this. Now this, it has a kind of jelly over it. And um, it's been a bit stabbed by my son with them. Um, with something on my desk because that was fun I think um, but basically you can kind of see um, you can kind of see there that there's like um, a kind of an explosion in the jelly so these transistors have literally shorted out um, and exploded or have been subject to a short circuit and you can kind of see there's sort of six pairs there um, so one for one sort of set for each phase we've obviously got three boards here and we've got that replicated there's sort of temperature sensors and stuff on here but we can kind of see that these ac phases it's quite fascinating actually you use loads of little strands of wire to carry the current and this car can charge up to 43 kilowatts ac so there's 43 kilowatts going through this module which is kind of cool um obviously until that happens um so yeah and if you scrape off all this jelly and we've got another one here i oh, can turn a bit more light on and um, you can kind of see here how it it's quite fascinating, really, how these transistors will set up. Um, this is one I've used for testing, just kind of working out what's connected to what. Um, but, yeah, just um, go down on that so you can get a good view, nice and black in places. So it literally physically fails and shorts out. Um, so what we're going to do is this is my replacement one. I've just taken off the other rectifier. So we've got to take this out 
um, which is all undone. It is um, uh, has got thermal paste on it because this base has got the coolant in it. You can sort of see where that jump is there. So that whole base part has coolant flowing up and down through it. So yeah, I've got to clean, well I don't need to clean that one up because that's the old one. So I've got to clean that up, clean the bottom of that one, swap the top over so that we've got the right variant with the working part and put it back together and then see what happens. See if we've got any other faults or if that's going to be it. And right, I will catch you in a bit. Cheers. Okay, so I've swapped over the base and this is the old one. I always like to write the reg on it so that you know definitely where it came from. I may cut the top off that at another point, but can't see any evidence of burning i have had them that bad i think that's just a little bit of something that's come on as i've been undoing it and um, yeah i've had them so bad that you can literally see like the explosion coming out the sides but nothing visible on that one but it is shorted anyway you can tell that with the meter so there should be no direct connection between the ac and the dc side it should always be controlled um and on that one um it's not it's just um just an open connection so um this is the one that i've prepped so this is going on here i've got my thermal compound so we need to get a nice thin layer of compound on here just to take out any undulations in there because that does get quite warm the one of the downsides of these zoe's that can do really fast ac charging is they're not that efficient um at low charge rates they have quite high fixed loss can be sort of 500 watts or even more um which a lot of that comes out of here basically so we just need to make sure that, that cooling is good so a good thermal compound um, and we'll put that on and get it back together and uh, then see what happens right i'll get this back together okay so this is back together i've just been double checking all the connections so i took a few pictures for our ticket apart um, and so just making sure all these interlock plugs are all back in all these obviously high voltage connections all everything absolutely back in the right place because that's all really important so interestingly um all these the connectors from sort of all these interlock connectors so it's checking the high voltage things are connected high voltage plugs are connected as we discussed so they're connected to all these connectors and then all these connectors connect to this loom and that just loops around and that's a plug into the side of the top of that rectifier so that's the as we said the ecu for this box so that's reporting back and whether those connections are in so this is all in the notable thing on this is that it's really dirty on the front and you can see it kind of um sort of dirty up to about there um this is another um, bcb from another car and you can see it's kind of clean basically the notable thing about the car that this has come from is it's had a bump at the front and it's missing part of the bumper so um so on this zoe so there's like a kind of semi-circular um like kind of crescent moon part just under there and on the car that um, these are from and um, that this is from that part is missing and um, so obviously you need to advise the customer they need to get that sorted because you're just getting water and, and moisture on all of these high voltage components um, and uh, that's not good obviously so um, i'm going to get this lid back on i've done my final checks i'm happy with all of this get that on put it in the car and then we'll see what happens right cool catch you in a bit okay so we've got this in we've got all the connections on the box isn't bolted down it's not got the coolant plumbed in but um, it is fitted enough for us to test charging so i have my granny lead so that's locked in. If we listen, we can hear how far it gets. So it does comms. Comms on a Zoe takes quite a while. See that? Hear that click? That was single phase. There you go. That's charging. That's charging. So if we look at the dash. There we go. Got a healthy 0%. But yeah, that is charging. Just going to have a quick look on the granny lead. Because it's not got the coolant. I can't leave it for too long. If we just look on here, it's consuming, it's taking 8.4 amps, 8.3, which will do me. And I'm just going to turn that off because it's got no coolant. Yeah, so there we go. It is charging. Fantastic. You can see the sort of general condition of this, of the vehicle. Um, yeah, you know, it's all just filthy down here and wet and stuff. But I've told the customer, I'll get it charging. You need to do some work on this car. Um, but yeah, I've not got the coolant plumbed in. So um, yeah, I'll do that next because I don't want to leave that too long because there's obviously no, there's no coolant running through that box um, and it'll run the pump and then it'll just all leak and stuff. So, and it'll damage the rectifier again because it'll overheat. So next job is to bolt this down properly now that it now works. Um, 
Yeah, sorry if I'm saying this quickly. I'm, I'm quite pleased at the moment. Um, so, yeah, we'll get these pipes back connected. So, oh, the pipe is just under there and it's got a plug on it. Get it all sort of fitted properly. Do a full charge. Make sure it's charging consistently. And, um, yeah, and then sort of um, stick the heater on and stuff like that. And then just to basically, you know, use it, take it for a test drive, all that kind of stuff. And make sure it's all working consistently. So, um yeah, awesome. Nice one. That was good fun, wasn't it? That was good fun. Yeah, I'm always a bit nervous, as, you know, if you're going to find other issues. So on this car, the compressor has gone. And um, because it's cold, it will still have the PTC heater working. So Zoe's have an additional heater below five degrees, additional electric heater. So we can use that to kind of, um, yeah, just warm up the car and test it out a bit more. But I will be doing the compressor on this car as well, because that needs doing. But we do the charging first, get it functionally working. And um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. But hopefully that was interesting. Um, I'm doing this outside, so I need to get this scuttle back on in case it rains, because um, that'll get wet. But yeah, I'm just going to get this bolted down. Um, and um, yeah, I've let the customer know. But there we go. It is a 13 plate. So yeah, that's 12 years old. Um, and it will get some more use. There's still life in it yet. So there you go. Quite cool, I think. Right. Well, I think I'm going to put the kettle on next, actually, and then do the scuttle. I think that's what I need. Right, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Any questions? Let me know, but there we go. Another one bites the dust. Cheers. Okay, I thought I'd do a quick update. So the car's still charging happily. The interesting thing um, is how much it's taken on. So it's charging at 9 amps now. So it was going a little bit slowly earlier, wasn't it? But we've done 0.8 kilowatt hours. So that should be enough energy to drive, like, over three miles um i suspect it was going a little bit slower just because of how flat the battery was and bearing in mind it's taken on 0.8 kilowatt hours it's still on zero percent so this car was effectively well below zero it was probably in real terms on about minus three percent um so it'll be interesting to see when it actually starts showing it's got some charge but the good thing about having that charger with the display is I definitely know this is taking power. I've seen Zoe's before when they're mega, mega low, they just charge slowly. So, because the, the cell voltage inside the high voltage battery is really, really low. But um, yeah, I've got this sort of pretty much back together, a couple of bits to put on, but just enough so that I'm happy to leave it charging. Um, and I'll see what happens. And all right, cheers. Okay, so the car is still on 0% although it's now giving me a time remaining, which is nice, which probably means it's actually on a real 0%, and it's actually charging at full speed, rather than charging really slowly, because it's so flat. So if we have a look, yeah, we've got 10 amps. Sorry, I'll try and hold this still. 10 amps now. So it's taken 1.33 kilowatt hours, and still on 0%. But yeah, nice to see it on 10 amps. So we know that the reason it was charging slowly um, is because it was just really, really dead flat. I've had that before on a Zoe I had, which was one of these 5 AMs. And um, we just pushed it a bit far and we were really, really low. Sort of limited performance by the time we got to the charge point. Plugged it in and it just charged really slowly. Just to start with, and then after a while it warms up. So we're now going full speed. So we're still on 0% and we've consumed, yeah, an impressive amount of power. So yeah, cool. Right, I'll check it in a bit. Cheers. Well, apologies, it's very dark now, but just to show you, we have got all the way to 2%. Oh, yeah. Cool. So um, it's still charging, which is good. Let's just have a look on the display on the charge point. Um, we'll charge the cable. So, yeah, we're taking 9.9 .9 amps, 9.8 amps, which is good. 1.844 kilowatt hours, which is cool. Yeah, so it is all good. Looking good, yeah. So it's continuing to charge, which is good. I'm just going to let it charge. Um, I probably won't leave it overnight, but I'll leave it charging all evening, which is cool. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in these sort of more kind of tech videos um, or to kind of discussing these kind of tech um, EV related topics, or if you've got issues with your own vehicle, then consider joining the channel membership. And the um, information is in the description. I'm going to leave this charging. And um, yeah, another one bites the dust. All right, catch you later. Cheers.